Good morning, everyone. I'm delighted to speak to you today. My name is Matt Hastings, Deputy Director for the Strategic Innovation Fund from Innovate UK. Many thanks to Bayes, Ofgem and the ENA, and to you for joining. Over the next few days, you will hear from some of the brightest minds in the industry. You'll immerse yourself in the sharp end of energy network innovation. Having spoken to all the networks at CNA firsthand what they're up to, networks have the potential to be some of the most innovative businesses in the world. There's a lot to be excited about already, but there is always room for improvement. This is just the beginning of a paradigm shift in the innovation landscape, a critical and urgent shift that can't afford just to nudge the tanker a little bit. It must pick it up and flip it on its head. So when I stand back and look up at this net zero mountain, I can't help but feel a bit daunted. It's a very steep climb, one that's never been done before. It's going to be the challenge of our lifetime and we need to sum it fast. I think of this mountain like it was a postcard, part of a vision for the UK Silicon Valley of energy. It needs to be hanging on the wall of every aspiring young climber in the world, the ultimate destination for the best and the brightest. UK energy is a brand that must capture the imagination. The UK Silicon Valley of energy needs to achieve three things. One, make the UK the best place in the world to be an energy user. If we put users in the center of the system, everyone wins. Two, make the UK the best place in the world for businesses, academics, and investors to grow and scale their ideas. Three, ensure the UK becomes a global talent magnet. Without a new generation flooding into the networks and across the energy system, we will fail. But we can't reach the valley and ascend this mountain without high performance, disruptive innovation, purposeful innovation. We need to rock the boat. So how does high performance innovation differ from normal innovation? It means thinking more about the how and the who as much as the what. The what is almost the easy bit and noted that's still hard. But the engineering isn't the secret source in high performance innovation. It's the way in which we originate, develop, partner, execute and scale, that is. So in terms of the how, here's 19 thoughts for consideration. We need a culture of innovation across the networks, and I'm delighted to be engaging with all the network CEOs on this exciting opportunity. We need to be learning from others. Unfortunately, we love being surrounded by people who think just like us. The ancient Greeks called it homophily, love of the same. I think it was that old duffer Plato who said, birds of a feather flock together. And that is what happens in the energy networks and across the sector. Group think, it's a killer. Gareth Southgate, the England football manager, takes advice from an army veteran, a tech entrepreneur and a cycling coach. Why? They encourage divergence of thinking. We need to be careful not to let what could become an echo chamber suck out all of the oxygen. We're gonna need it for the summit. And we need to pursue collaborations, the likes of which we've never considered, partnering with the unusual suspects. Think Run DMC and Aerosmith, or Lego and Warner Brothers. We need to find partners who make us feel a bit uncomfortable and accelerate their ideas. We must wrap our visionaries with those who can execute and scale, forming teams that dream and deliver in equal measure. We need to take technology from other sectors, from satellite communications to synthetic biology, robotics, food and logistics. How can we utilize the same technology in the heads up display of a fighter pilot and bring that into the energy networks? And let's start to see networks as incubators of capability, spinning in and spinning out innovation, creating business and consumer value beyond the network itself. Energy networks are a bit like the Sherpas of the net zero mountain, Think more like Tenzing than Hillary. Regulated monopolies are seen by some as being in a privileged position. And although I appreciate it doesn't always feel like this from inside a network. And as such, there's an argument that the network should be doing the hard yards, should be doing the heavy lifting and helping others to take the glory. That kind of Sherpa style humility is sometimes missing, but it is key to our future success. Humility is what could help stop the networks becoming the blockbuster video of the next decade. Think of Rami Sherpa. He took a climb that most exceptional athletes might do once in their lives, Everest Summit, and he helped other people do it 25 times, the world record. And by other people, we mean networks helping other network users in the system, supply generate 
creators, aggregators, service companies, startups, scale-ups, domestic customers, business customers, local authorities, and communities. Not helping them on one or two projects, but on every project from now until forever. Helping to buy that innovation when it's ready and turning it into business as usual hundreds of times a year. Helping the business, not just the technology, embodying new levels of corporate citizenship. Networks should be collaborating and competing with and against each other to be the partner of choice, the best Sherpa on the mountain, attracting a long line of quality partners. We need more of a one team mentality, a one network philosophy. We need to stop solving the same problems in marginally different ways. Networks have shared problems that can be solved better together than in isolation. And yes, there are great examples where this happens, but it needs to be the norm, not the exception. Success means an idea that starts in one network gets rolled out across all the networks. And this doesn't just happen once, but all the time, every time, from now until forever. We need to forget about the idea of projects or trials and start thinking of developing products. Implementation is everything. We need to buy innovation, not just test it. Working with networks can sometimes be an uphill struggle for innovators. Making change happen requires a lot of tenacity and we need to make it a downhill breeze, working with gravity, not against it, excited by the excess speed, not frustrated by the lack of it. Innovation works best in a survival situation. How else did we find spears and fire? The sooner we acknowledge the need for fear on the mountain, the longer we will stay alive. High performance innovation needs to challenge our own internal governance processes and decision making. We need to hunt down and destroy bureaucracy. If we're spending more time doing business with ourselves, it's less time we can spend adding value to users. We need to know the rule of the ones who are making the decisions. Investment committees are often, not always, populated with risk averse decision makers. When it comes to innovation, decision makers should be experienced risk takers. We also need more decision making from network users and consumers. What innovation do they want to see? What if a supplier made that decision or a generator or a startup or a vulnerable customer or a local authority? Changing the how means empowering network users to choose what innovations they think the networks need to do and then helping make it happen. One of the biggest issues with network innovation is networks have an image problem seen by some as Luddites. Now, I have to say this perception does not always reflect the reality, but it is true to say that engineers, much like economists, are not always the greatest storytellers. We need to pollinate others with stronger stories. It's more than just writing reports. And in terms of the who, here's eight thoughts to consider. We need to massively improve the diversity of people and we will reap the rewards of the diversity in ideas. We need to become the most diverse and inclusive creative community on the planet. We need to create a talent pipeline that is bursting at the seams with capability and opportunity. We desperately need fresh blood. We need to build on some great practice already active in some of the networks and empower every employee to innovate, not just the innovation team, and facilitate creativity and curiosity at every turn, providing teams with the freedom to explore. We need to find a way to ensure that entrepreneurialism runs through every sinew of the business. And we must protect those rare mavericks, the constructive disruptors, the status quo cannibals. They should be supported at all costs. We need to seek out the rebels with a cause. Whilst it might not feel like it, they tend to be fiercely loyal. And their biggest secret, they care enough about the future to be brave enough to challenge the present. And this conference needs to evolve too. I say this not to offend, but to inform. Often Enoch is seen outside the networks as the Networks Appreciation Society. Networks sitting in a circle, telling other networks how great they are. That needs to change if we're to change the image of the networks in the eyes of other members of the system. And I'm not saying that other parts of the system have got this right either. High performance innovation is not just about the networks. It's a whole system challenge. We need government, Ofgem and UKRI to do their part too alongside other members of the system. We must provide more strategic coordination. It's essential. Policy, regulation, innovation should work hand in glove. Strategic planning on the ground at a local level and in the center at a national level is vital. And that takes me back to the postcard of the mountain and the scale of the challenge. We will need a spirit of war at a time of peace. 
a determination to succeed, a will to survive. The same spirit that brought the networks together during the pandemic is the same one that will deliver net zero. We must think and do like one system, one network, one team. The prize for the networks is not the selfie on the summit. It's in how many others we helped get up there. We either get there together or we won't get there at all. We simply don't have the time to sit in base camp for a few weeks and acclimatize. We have to start right now. Every day we delay, the steeper and more perilous the climb becomes. So onwards and upwards, start with some big, bold steps. As the old adage goes, you can't cross a chasm in two small jumps. We need to start by taking one giant leap into the unknown together. The climb will be well worth the effort and the view from the summit will be the most spectacular future you've ever seen. Thank you.